Hello, folks. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Cody Martin. I'm a red team operator with Black Lantern Security. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about threat matrices, which are products of risk assessments. Um, threat matrices calculate risk associated with different attack narratives that are kind of developed and, and maintained and burst out of doing those risk assessments. Um, so what's the problem with these threat matrices? Um, while, while they're very important uh, for conducting accurate and modern assessments of risk, uh, their creation can be tedious, complicated, and often prone to bias, uh, which overall just results in poor uh, risk assessment. Well, we hope to be solving these issues with uh, our new tool, Enter the Matrix. Okay, so when I'm talking about risk assessments, I'm referring to a NIST special publication, uh, the Guide to Conducting Risk Assessments. Uh, these assessments are meant to be executed regularly as major um, elements of organizational uh, risk management processes. Uh, one of the main products of these risk assessments are threat matrices. Okay, and uh, these risk assessments should typically be concerned with um, what are likely threats, how those threats manifest themselves, what are what's being attacked in these situations, are those things vulnerable, and are there any potential impacts from those things being attacked. Uh, threat matrices organize these concerns into narratives, which quantify the risk that an organization can utilize to better direct their often limited resources with. Okay, so if you've not seen one, um, this is a threat matrix. Uh, we're covering, you know, the what is being attacked in the threat scenario and uh, events column. Um, what is um, what's it vulnerable to, and and how is it defended in the vulnerabilities, predisposing conditions, and mitigations columns. Uh, also, what the impact is felt uh, from that event happening is in the uh, impact column there at the end. Okay, so why are these things difficult? Why do they tend to be difficult? Um, for one, it's hard to maintain consistency between and even within organizations. Uh, also, calculating certain values within the threat matrix can be kind of complicated. Uh, this, in turn, can lead to bad assessments of risk and, uh, again, kind of limit or uh, waste resources that are um, so often limited by organizations. Uh, lastly, just working with, uh, within Excel in general uh, provides its own challenges and provides an opportunity for unnecessary mistakes and often bias on part of the, the operators uh, creating these for their clients. Okay, so haha, uh -huh, this is, you know, me trying to fill out my first one and just kind of hating the day. Uh, but uh, yeah, so here's a example scenario. Uh, we've got APT41 uh, executing a, a ransomware on a, a target organization. Um, these matrices typically involve multiple scenarios. Um, each of these scenarios are a collection of events. Uh, each of these events considers something being attacked, you know, its vulnerabilities, its defenses, and any possible impacts uh, incurred by the client. Uh, each event also has a threat source, as highlighted in the slide here. Um, these threat sources would typically be like, a, you'd, you'd want to think like a, you know, an APT or insider threat or, or something like, along those lines. Okay, we've also uh, strayed a little bit from the NIST recommendations uh, and included the MITRE ATT&CK IDs uh, to this NIST template. Um, you can see they're hyperlinked here, so whenever you click on those, it'll take you to the um, MITRE ATT&CK website for, for full details on what that technique is. Um, here we can see the threat source characteristics, uh, which model your attacker's capability, intent, and level of targeting. Uh, there's also a relevance column, which shows how uh, that particular event is relevant to your client. Uh, just as an example, uh, like a, a confirmed event would be something that the, um, the, the team conducting the risk assessment uh, successfully executed while doing the assessment, um, whether that's landing a phishing campaign or um, getting domain admin, you know, whatever. 
Also, we have uh, the two base likelihood values for attack initiation and um, that event resulting in adverse impact. Uh, these two combined to yield an overall likelihood value. Uh, we also have vulnerabilities, predisposing conditions, uh, the vulnerability severity and pervasiveness of a predisposing condition. Uh, also, uh, mitigations are called out here uh, that were observed during the assessment. Uh, and lastly, uh, impact, which considers the depth at which a particular event affects your, your uh, client organization. Okay. So how do we calculate risk? Um, that kind of last column here. Um, there are three major factors that ultimately determine the overall risk. Uh, the first two are those base likelihood values, which are, like I said before, combined and they uh, are evaluated to yield an overall likelihood value. And then also uh, the overall likelihood is combined with the level of impact. Um, these two values are evaluated and, and yields a, uh, a value for overall risk. Uh, you might be thinking, like, what's the point of all these other columns if really only three of them end up determining your, your overall risk? Um, it, it's kind of important to take into account those other columns, um, particularly uh, attack initiation likelihood benefits uh, a great deal from taking the threat source, threat source characteristics into account. Um, the, the likelihood of an event leading to you know, adverse impact uh, benefits from taking the relevancy of that event into account. Um, yeah. And then whenever you're deciding the value for level of impact, uh, you'd want to take into account, you know, what vulnerabilities did you discover? Were there any predisposing conditions in place um, when doing the assessment? And did you run into any mitigations that uh, impeded or, or blocked that event from happening altogether? Uh, one last thing about threat matrices that I really want to bring up, um, they are really meant to just ensure that, that leadership, uh, product owners, defenders, and assessors are all working from within the same reality. Um, threat matrices should typically be considered a single point of truth uh, between all parties, and there really needs to be good sound reasoning in place before changing um, the contents of one. Uh, okay, so all that brings us to uh, our tool, uh, ETM, or uh, Enter the Matrix. It was created to make the entire threat matrix process as painless as possible while increasing overall consistency within an assessing organization. Uh, it's also updatable as TTPs change, um, like the MITRE ATT&CK framework. It's, it's changing at a, a pretty quick clip. Um, over time, ETM has grown to include graph generation and also improve consistency within the community, resulting in better data for all of our clients, hopefully. Uh, if you want to give it a try, uh, it's over on the Black Lantern Security GitHub repo. Um, it's a web application. It's written in C Sharp on .NET Core. Uh, it uses Mongo as the database. Uh, it supports local authentication or LDAP integration um, for, for um, authenticating to the application. Um, also, Graphis and D3 uh, JavaScript library are used on the back end for generating the graphs. Okay, so how do we go about fixing some of the problems that, um, that we've identified? Um, for one, the, the uh, user interface. Uh, should hopefully reduce the pain felt by the end user by removing their need to interact directly with the uh, within Excel. Uh, also, we've included helper dialogues uh, for each factor, which eliminates the need to cross reference with outside information, um, particularly the tables found in NIST documentation. Uh, we also added our own uh, BLS descriptions just to make it a little more uh, easy to understand, easy to follow. Um, ETM also will automatically generate spreadsheets for you, uh, which removes the need for you to, you know, fuss with uh, formatting inside of Excel. Uh, it also takes care of the calculations that I had mentioned before um, for the overall likelihood and overall risk values, uh, just based on, you know, the other values that you put into the application. Um, 
ETM provides a uh, repository of past assessments that you can learn from and pull from to maintain a little bit more consistency over time within your organization. Uh, you can also create templates in ETM. Uh, this allows you to reuse threat sources and events that um, you had used in the past. And some we aim to improve uh, over time uh, is consistency within the community. Uh, we think we can do this with template packs, um, templating out uh, different threat sources, uh, different uh, attack narratives, um, and these can be imported and exported from the tool. Uh, a part of the attack narratives, uh, you can also generate graphs uh, alongside them. Uh, this makes presenting the results of your assessment a, a little bit easier to non-technical audiences. Um, ETM also generates threat trees. Uh, they, it goes through and accumulates all of the MITRE techniques that were used during an assessment, and it allows the end user to connect them in any way they wish. Um, custom categories as many links as you want um you can change the overall style and yeah yeah so yeah um graph features um they kind of allows your your tree to have a wide a wide array of customization um this affects the shape size direction style of your graph um also each node um has a wide selection of options to choose from uh, that changes how each technique is presented with inside your graph. Uh, spreadsheets that ETM exports are uh, can be considered living. So as clients improve their security posture over time, they can return back to these threat matrices and update them. And as they update them, those calculated fields for overall likelihood and overall risk um, are handled automatically within the spreadsheet. And lastly, um, ETM can export threat matrices to printable PDF form if for whatever reason a digital copy of a threat matrix isn't, uh, isn't preferred. Okay, so I'm gonna switch over to a demo, hopefully. Let's see if I can, okay. Hopefully this is still getting shared. <laughs> We can see your virtual machine loading up. Awesome. Great news. <laughs> okay. Kind of a wonky resolution, but it'll be okay. So, like I mentioned before, um, ETM has uh, local authentication in place. So, you can go ahead and log in as your um, admin user. And oh, wait, wait. Hopefully. Okay, I just wanted to hang. Okay, well, give me just a second. Uh, it's also uh, made to run with Docker, so that's kind of cool. There we go. Cool, okay. So we can go ahead and log in with our uh, admin user. Uh, you can create new users. Go ahead and log out. Log back in with our newly created user. All right. um, and this is the main landing page. You can go to assessments. You can view your templates. 
Um, just viewing over to assessments, you can see that past repository of uh, assessments that have been done. Um, let's see, we'll go to Awesome Corp, because you're awesome. Uh, and these are the scenarios that have been uh, started uh, for this assessment. Uh, we've got an overprivileged web app and the APT41 ransomware that I was uh, referring to in the slides. Uh, let's go ahead and look at APT41 ransomware. Um, here you can see all of the events involved in that uh, particular attack narrative. Um, I do want to throw out that if, you, if you're making one of these and they're kind of out of order, if you want to reorder them, you can totally just drag and drop them around and put them in whatever order you, you need them to be in. Um, also, just want to point out here that we are missing the last step for them actually deploying ransomware. Um, so we'd have to create an event. Um, here is where you would see templates to pull from if you had any. Uh, you could also create just from new if you wanted to. Um, but we actually have templates for this. So let's go ahead and import. There we go. APT41 ransomware. Go ahead and import that in. There we go. We can see we've got APT41 deploys ransomware there. Um, so we can go back to our assessment and create an event. And now that list is populated, this filters. So if you want to do ransomware, APT41, it's in all of those, but yeah, ransomware, import it. Uh, pretty much everything in here is already filled out because it's it was a templated out event. Um, let's see, this is the this is how we're supporting MITRE ATT&CK. Uh, you can go through, and these are just kind of accordion categories that you can go through and select from. Um, each of these little helper icons, as you can see, will take you to the MITRE ATT&CK website if you need uh, more information about it before you make your choice. Um, if you already know what you're looking for, you can just type up in here the name of what you're looking for. Uh, we're looking for Data Encrypted for Impact, which is already selected, which is awesome. Um, also want to shout out that we are supporting attack for ICS. Uh, I think in the last talk, um, uh, colonial pipeline and stuff was, was attacked and I think it's going to be, uh, the area of more focus, hopefully in the future, but, um, yeah. So, oh, and then the other hyper, um, helper dialogues that I mentioned in the talk, um, like attacker intent. Uh, here you can see NIST descriptions of what a, a very high uh, attacker attempt would be. Um, they like to use terms like, um, you know, severely impede, um, impede. Uh, yeah, it, it, it can just kind of be a little bit vague. So we took the initiative and, and just kind of created our own a um, little bit easier to understand descriptions here. Okay, the only thing that's not included in these templates is the graph information for um, the attack narrative graphs. Um, so whenever you import them, just you just want to collect or select what icons you want to use. Um, this is a set of completely custom icons that um, we made for the tool. Um, okay, and then the description here is the description that will actually show up in the graph. Um, pretty simple. And then the preceded by area, um, you can have as many or as few as one um, links leading to this, uh, this event occurring in your graph. So if you, um, you know, if you wanted to show off that, you know, you have to execute four things simultaneously to lead to um, one vulnerability being exploited, um, you could totally do that with this. Um, Right here, we're just connecting domain admin to deploy ransomware. Go ahead and save that. Um, oh, uh, also, if you do create an event um, manually, you can go ahead and save that out as a template if you want. Okay, so, all right, so we can go ahead and show the graph. Uh, these are made, um, they utilize the D3 JavaScript library on the back end. Um, 
it's pretty neat. Uh, you can just kind of click and drag your graph wherever you want it, and it'll it'll stick there. Uh, there we go. You can make it look as neat or unorganized as you want. Um, double clicking releases all these icons for you. Um, this will when you click the save button, it'll it'll save as a transparent background. Um, so you can use it in any kind of um, watermark documents that you want to use. Um, also, there's a markdown button. Uh, we have another tool called uh, Right Hat that uh, we developed to kind of replace the need to use um, like word processing tools. Also incorporates um, like technical finding um, repository and and keeping track of findings during an assessment. Um, utilizes markdown, so it behooved us to just generate um, a lot of things in Markdown in our other tools. Um, this automatically you know, generates that Markdown based on the event descriptions um, for each of those events. What else? Um, uh, next, I can show off the threat tree. Um, so like I said earlier, uh, these accumulate all of the uh, attack techniques that were used across the assessment and presents them to the end user. Um, most values can be left as default uh, just to make a, a nice pretty graph, but um, they, they do need to be connected though by the end user. Um, so we can scroll down to the bottom here and see the event that we just added, which was that encrypted for impact. We can go ahead and enable that in our graph. Um, we can change, we can select the category for it, but we don't really have an impact category. So I'm gonna go ahead and save our change there. And then we can edit the category and just go ahead and add it in. Um, so we'll say impact and Let's see, and for whatever reason, um, Firefox doesn't like rendering this color in the dropdown list. Um, so that's, that's kind of annoying, but uh, in Chrome, it works a lot better. So go ahead and save that. And we'll go back down to our node and plop it into the correct category. There we go. And then we're also going to connect it to uh, proceeding techniques. Um, bah, 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 bah. Okay. There we go. And there we go. Okay. And I also wanted to point out that um, a lot of these options, like making the graph ranked or making the graph clustered or directed, um, the I, we don't expect anybody to really know what that means. So we uh, included helper dialogues here too. So if you want to make your graph ranked, um, you can see on the left here, that's um, that's kind of what it would look like if there, if you had A and B ranked together and C and D ranked together. And yeah, so we, we give examples for what all these options mean. Um, you can also just kind of play around with them and see what different kinds of, uh, what kinds of graphs you, you end up with. Kind of cool. Um, Okay, we'll go ahead and save changes and export the graph. Um, go ahead and zoom out here. My resolution is crazy, but you can kind of see here that uh, you've got your recon phase, your initial access techniques happening here, escalating privilege, gaining persistence, then also impact. Um, these arrows can be changed to a, a wide selection of, of different styles. Um, how these edges are merged or not merged or styled can all be changed. Um, so yeah, go ahead and go back. Hmm. Okay. So I think lastly, we want to look at actually exporting the threat matrix. Um, first we can see exporting to HTML or print to PDF. Um, first you'll kind of get this HTML page, um, super high contrast. Um, you can review your uh, threat matrix here. Going to print. Uh, if you want, if you want colors and stuff, you'll have to um, go over here to more settings, print backgrounds, 
you can kill the headers and footers if you want switch it over to landscape and now it's a lot prettier um but yeah that's how you would do that and and then exporting we can also export as the um, original deliverable, uh, a nice, pretty spreadsheet. Um, we're running in Windows, right? Or not? We're running in Linux right here, so it's going to open up in Open Office and look kind of, um, kind of less. And I've noticed that whenever opening this up in Open Office, um, you kind of have to highlight some stuff and and get it to expand. But when opening it in PowerPoint, like we normally would, um, it doesn't have that issue. Um, but yeah, there's the threat matrix. Um, and like I mentioned, uh, these guys are um, clickable. So whoever you hand this off to can click these and look and go, oh, okay. Um, gathering victim network information. You know, what are the mitigations that we can go ahead and put in place? Uh, so yeah. Um, yeah, I think that um, kind of concludes the, the demo portion. Let me see if I can get this back over to presenting. Yeah, looks like it worked. Okay, cool. So yeah, all I have left is really just, you know, is if anybody has any questions, feel free to reach out. Um, you can check out our website, blacklanternsecurity.com. Um, we also, I know I mentioned Right Hat, one of our other tools, but we have, um, uh, a whole heaping load of uh, <laughs> free tools over at GitHub uh, slash Black Lantern Security. Um, this tool, obviously, over at Enter the Matrix. Uh, if you want to contact me, um, I've got a little website, debbiefrank.com. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter, debbiefrank14. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll just kind of leave it open for questions if anybody has any. But uh, thanks for having me.